Welcome to InnoBuzz Java Video Tutorial Part 9. This chapter is about exception handling. When we create a program, time to time we will meet exceptions. What are they? There can be many possible errors or unexpected uh, events that occur. Sometimes the program doesn't work as it should, as we expect it to do, expect it to work. Some situations there are errors occurring that in Java language, they are special kind of objects. They are the exceptions. When an error occurs in Java, it usually results in an exception being thrown. The way we throw catch and handle these exceptions matters. There are several different ways to do this and uh, they are not equally efficient and safe. For example, if we have a program code and uh, some special errors occur, then it can result in our program to stop. If we are not coping with this error, with this exception, if we don't handle it at all, then our program will stop and the user will get some kind of error text that he won't be able to understand like an error number or something. We have to handle these exceptions. We have to catch them to be able to continue the program even if something is not working properly. Let's see the overview of the chapter. We will talk about the need of exception handling in general. We will see the exception hierarchy in Java. We will write try, catch, and finally constructs that are the basics of exception handling. We will see the throne and throws keywords in details. We will talk about cascading exceptions. The checked and unchecked exceptions. And finally, the user-defined exceptions. Why do we need to use exception handling? Why is it important? Well, as I have told, if something unexpected happens, then there is an exception object that is thrown. And in this case, we have to do something with this situation, otherwise the program will stop and we cannot do what we wanted it to do. Of course, we can set up some conditions, like if something can be done, for example, a file can be opened properly, then do something else, then there is an error, some kind of error, and do something else, and conditions like this. But exception handling is designed for this, so it, uh, we can do it much better with exception handling, and it's much more easy to read and create these codes and uh, to modify them later, and we can do much more with exception handling. How does it look like? So we have a program code where the error erased. Something happened that was unexpected. There is an exception object that is thrown this way. And there have to be somewhere a program part where this exception is handled, where this exception is sketched. This program part can be in a totally different place. So this is one of the advantages of exception handling, that the error handling can be at a different program part. So we can write the program part that we want the program to do, and we can place at a different program part the exception handling. So it's easier to look at our code and to understand what it does. The other advantage is the categorization of exceptions. They are from general to specific. There are lots of exceptions that are already built in Java language, and we can also create some user-defined exceptions 
and uh, the exceptions are objects, as I mentioned. So they know a lot about the event that caused the problem. So we can have many informations from it, and we can do something to be able to continue the program. We can use general exception objects and uh, some kind of specific things as well. So we can decide what to do depending on what our exception is. The exception travels through the call stack, which means that the place where the error happened is somewhere in the call stack. So methods call each other and classes call methods from other classes. And there is a calling chain that we can go through back and see where the exception happened and handle it somewhere in the calling parts, for example. Let us now talk about the exception hierarchy in Java language. Since the exceptions are objects, as we have mentioned, different types of exceptions can be subclassed of one another, just as with other objects. Java exception classes are organized into a hierarchy. All classes can be subclassed from throwable class. This is the basic exception class, which is then subclassed into exception and error. The error collects a representation of so-called serious errors that a program generally shouldn't expect to catch and recover from. For example, uh, these include conditions uh, such as an expected class is uh, missing or out of memory error or things like that that cannot be handled. So the program will not continue on. The other biggest class is the exception class. This subclass represents errors that a program can reasonably recover from. They generally represent errors that the program will expect to occur in the normal course of duty. For example, network connection errors and filling system errors. There are further subclasses of exception. For example, the runtime exception, which is very important. The runtime exception and uh, the subclasses of it are a little bit different. They represent exceptions that uh, the program shouldn't generally expect to occur, but could potentially recover from. So, these are programming errors that occur during runtime, but they represent what are likely to be programming errors. All the exceptions that are going to be subclassed from this runtime exception are called unchecked exceptions. We are going to talk about that later. And we have also other exceptions that are, come from the exception class subclasses of it. These are the checked exceptions as we are going to see. So these are the so-called um, normal exceptions that I've already mentioned. The important thing is that there are many predefined exceptions in Java language that we are going to see in the Java specification that uh, there are many, 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 many classes and subclasses of each other that represent most of the common things that can happen during a um, program code. Usually we don't have to write our own exceptions, we can use the built-in things. But if you want, there is a possibility of course to write user-defined exceptions. We are going to see that as well. Let us now browse a little bit around here in the Java platform, Standard Edition 7 specification. 
at the website of Oracle to see the Java exception hierarchy a little bit closer. I am the, at the starting page here. We can see all the packages just like in the previous time. And uh, I'm going to go inside of java.long. That is one of the most important uh, packages. Here we are. We can see all the interfaces and the classes. And what we need indeed is the throwable class. The class throwable, which comes from the object, and uh, the throwable class is the superclass of all errors and exceptions in the Java language. Only objects that are instances of this can uh, are thrown by the Java virtual machine or can be thrown by the Java throw statement. Now, there are very useful informations that we can see here. If you have time to read over this, this is uh, very useful. And uh, there are the constructors of, of the throwables. We have talked about them a little bit. Whenever we create one, we have to use one of these constructors. For example, we have seen when we were chaining the exceptions, we, will, we have seen this, this kind of uh, constructor when we get, them, get a message, we give a parameter a message, and also a throwable, which is the cause. It constructs a new throwable with the specified detail message and cause. For example, if you want to use just one string message, it constructs a new throwable with the specified detailed message, detail message. So this can be used. There are also the methods, the constructors and details. What I want to show is uh, go in the direct subclasses, uh, the error and the exception. These are the This is the error. This is the subclass of the throwable. Yes. And uh, just uh, the first sentence. An error is a subclass of throwable that indicates serious problems that are uh, a reasonable application should not try to catch. Most such errors are abnormal conditions. So these are some kind of fatal uh, errors that can that can uh, happen and there are the subclasses what kind of annotation format error assertion error um, input output error virtual machine error thread death so these are these are very yes for example the input output error thrown when a serious input output error has occurred. Well, it's more like laconic, but uh, we can use, for example, we can see the virtual machine error. It's thrown to indicate that the Java virtual machine is broken or has run out of resources necessary for it to continue operating. So when we create uh, such Error ex er throwables, error throwables. Uh, we can we can see that uh, when we use them, that these are also already created for us. And the other thing uh, that I want to show, of course, is the exception. As you can see, there are lots of direct subclasses of it. Really, lots of. The class exception and its subclasses are from throwable that, that indicates conditions that are a reasonable application might want to catch. So this is important. 
So we have to catch these if we want our program to work as we imagined it. Parse exception, for example, input output exception, application exception, lots of lots of things that are really user exception, stream XML stream exception, runtime exception that I have mentioned. This is the parent of the, all the unchecked exceptions. So you can browse around here, and uh, this is very useful to look around for everybody. Just a few seconds to, to spend on the runtime exceptions. Well, there are lots of subclasses of it as well, as we can see. The runtime exception is the superclass of those exceptions that can be thrown during the normal operation of the Java virtual machine. These are the unchecked exceptions that I've already mentioned. Yes, but I've told that. So this is the way we can we can look at the all the exceptions and errors because uh, we only have to create uh, user defined exceptions in some special cases. So normally there are dozens of um, exceptions built in the Java and and we can use them for our programs. The basics of exception handling in Java is a try, catch, and finally constructs. How do they look like? The try is, starts with the try and the opening brackets, and then comes the program code that we are expecting the error from. So this is the program code where the error can occur. We write here what we want the program to do, but we know that the error can come anytime. So that's why we close the bracket after this program code and we write the catch keyword. And after it in uh, round brackets comes the exception type, the class, exception classes. And we can write many catch parts so we can use the exceptions exception type 1 exception type 2 and after it in query brackets come the codes to handle the type of the corresponding type type of exception and at the end comes a final statement which is important because uh, it contains codes that will run in any case after the try. So this part will run if the try, if the codes in the try can um, be executed normally. So when no error, no exception happens. But it also runs when some exception happen and some of the catch parts run. That's why it, it is called finally, because it's, it runs in any situation. The next important thing to make difference between the throw and the throws keywords. As we can see, there is only one letter different at the end, but uh, they do totally different things. Let us see now how they work. Well, in our program code, we can uh, throw exceptions. For example, if we have a condition that we want to check in a specified program part, then we write, for example, an if condition. If this error condition is true, then we rise a 
exception object the throw it with the keyword throw throw new throwable object which is a subclass of throwable so it can be exception or error from this point the exception is thrown and it has to be cached in some program part later on the throws can be used in uh, method declarations. So we have here public void method name, throws exceptions, and we tell here, separated by comma, the names of the exception classes, exception class one and two, and so on and so on. So we can specify after a method name that inside the method, what kind of exceptions can be thrown and inside there are the program codes so this is the difference between them so one is the throws just specifies that what exceptions are going to be thrown and the throw actually throws it inside the program let us now do some practice on the exception handling here i want to use the same codes that, that we created the same classes um, because we all know them we all know what's inside them we have the interfaces and the javas and everything here the classes and abstract class and everything that we have already created so during our tutorial so this is the best to use because it contains lots of different kind of codes that uh, we can just modify and and uh, and I don't have to build up a whole new thing well from this time for this time uh, we will talk about the exceptions I have cheated a little bit and I have written here some uh, very common exceptions that that uh, happen to most of the programmers uh, time after time uh, they are very frequent uh, in our programs and I want to create the basic uh, exception handling things for these for example let's start with the an array of index out of bounds exception which is very frequent well let's let's do a common thing for example i created this um, person interface i created this person interface array here with the girls and uh, all I want to do is, for example, write a simple for cycle for it. But this time, use this, the normal for cycle. And uh, let's say this is a, a programmer. Let's say that I'm a programmer now who just simply forgot for some reason that the array started the indexes from zero. And let's say I, I say that. Uh, I just forgot it and I start the index from one and I go until the girls that length and I say I plus plus and I say that uh, uh, this is the quick way to write the system print line I just forgot it previously I ju just say that the girl, girl, uh, and the number, girl one, girl two, girl. I don't know. Yes, and just get the name of her. I forget the plus. girls 
at the index e and get name. That's it. Well, this way we will reach the end and uh, we want to access the fourth, uh, fourth index at the array, but this will cause an exception for us. So I, to be able to see it, I put it in a try catch block. So try this and catch. Catch what I've said, this long, 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 long name, array out of bounds exception. And I give a variable to it. And this way, I can say that, uh, for example, too big index or something like that. And uh, I can also add e dot, well, get message, for example, the message that it contains. So let's see what happens now. Okay, I cut this out because I don't want to see all the lines here. Yes, we can see that the girls are coming here. Girl 1, Judith, girl 2, Elizabeth, girl 3, Stephanie. And the next is two big index and it's four. This is the get message from from the exception that it's a too big index and it was catched this array out of bounds exception yes now this was it and this is the way to do it because uh, I, I started from one so we didn't uh, even find the Jane but it's okay. All right. Yeah. Let's show something else. It's very common, the new null pointer exception as well. I want to put it here somewhere. Now we have created this get average mass index for the stacks. And they, it works all right. But what happens if I pass a null pointer here? If I don't put, put anything in the stack and it's, it's just uh, null. Well, uh, then in this case, our program will have problems. So I'm going to show it to you. I say that stack our stack is equals to null. And I comment this out. And also these parts. Let's see what happens now. I pass a null. Well, it's an ugly exception that was in the main and, and we can see that it's an interest project main in the line 14. So this line, we call the average mass index here and in, also in the person Java 98 here we wanted to use the stack but it was it was a null well and as you can see all the other things that would have been the further this system outs and the girls and the other things we cannot see them because the program just stopped so it was an abnormal thing and we it finished the working so this is not what we want. The best what we can do here as well is to put it in a try, try catch block.
let's write catch block and uh, just to arrange a little bit the code and also I get have the null pointer exception here and I handle it and I say null passed to well we can copy the whole thing so this way we can see all the the name of course and uh, just write here also the e get message all right or we can also use a to string let's see what it has and what we also can do is to write a finally i say finally and as I have mentioned, the finally is going to be executed in any situations. And as you can see, the NetBeans uh, finds it all right. So I can put the return statement into the finally. Uh, and this means that the Java compiler knows that this will run anyway. So, for example, I, I just show it. If I if I would write something here, I don't know if four smaller than five or something. No. Well, we get an error. Yeah, that missing written statement. So if I if I write an if here, then the compiler is not sure that we are going to get the return statement. So because there is a so it depends if if the if the if is true or false. I just wanted to show it. Uh, this was not so important. But the finally, I put the return. So anything happens, I return this thing. Okay. Now, what what is going to happen? Let's see. Well, okay. New pass to the public cataridge mass index. So it happened. We catch this. It's no pointer exception that the, the string gives us it. Well, it's okay. And the average is nan because it's uh, it's zero divided by zero. But in fact, this uh, this doesn't give us an exception here because. Uh, we cannot divide by zero if we use integers, for example. But with floats, it doesn't give the exception. Okay, but what we what happens if we want to catch an exception? Uh, for example, here the no pointer exception, but we are not sure about it that uh, maybe some other exception can also happen here. So we cannot be sure. It's uh, the best to write another catch, for example, that handles all exceptions. So 
it's the general exception thing. So the exception class in general, well, uh, exception, I have to study to type. And uh, well, I say general exception, for example, and also E dot get string, maybe E dot get message, just to see what it was. Now to try this out, um, for example, I I use the other the arithmetic exception. So I want to catch it. I want to catch the arithmetic exception. But I will get another one. Yes. Exception in Java. I know printer exception. So general exception. So now the other catch has sketched it as we can see and what i have uh, already mentioned that in this case that we have catched the exception we can see that all the other lines are there as well so all these girls and and judith elizabeth tiffany and the other thing with the two big index they all ca can be seen because we catch the exception, so the program could continue on working even if that even if we didn't really do anything else with the, anything with this uh, error, then just writing out something. Okay. Now I also want to show the throws. The throws. Um. After the method declaration part, the, this we can use the throws keyword, and we can say what exceptions uh, we will throw here. Divided by comma, or separated by separated by comma. Like this, and also the. Oh, this is going to be enough. So this is the throws. We have to give it if we use the exceptions that are uh, not belonging to the Java lang that uh, runtime exception. Well, indeed, these are subclasses of runtime exception so i don't have to use it i don't it is not obligatory to use this this time but we i can do it to show that this throws these exceptions and uh, previously we have seen that we get a nan here why do we get it because we uh, uh, got a null pointer here, and uh, this part cannot run, so I cannot go through this stack. I cannot count the persons, and I cannot add this. This these uh, keep on being zero, so the value doesn't change. And at the end, I make this division zero by zero. It may not give us an exception because they are not uh, integers. But what I want to do is that uh, I can throw an exception if I want. So I say that if person count. equals to zero then 
throw new arithmetical exception. Arithmetical exception. So if I don't want to, uh, so I, I want to throw this exception, for example, and I save that. Uh, I, I change this code a little bit. I put it here or yes I, I just i just do it like this i put it here so return and this way i will return zero Okay, so this time, if we have this, I'm going to return zero. What's the matter? Oh, it won't be reached after the throw. Okay, well, this is it. I don't even have to do this. Sorry, so if we throw the exception, then it's uh, not going to finish the parts. So, in the finally, I, I say if this is zero, throw a new arithmetical exception, and uh, other ways, return this. So, this is what we will have to handle as well. So, okay, that I throw it here, but I will have to catch it. Because if I don't catch it, we'll get an error. So, let's see now. Yes. Unreported exception. Must be caught or declared to be thrown. That's what I wanted to see. So, the Java compiler already knows that... Uh, there is going to be thrown an exception when I call this method. So this way, I have to catch it. Oh, sorry. So I have to use a try catch block, for example, here, or throw it further. And catch. So I should catch our exception. It was this arithmetical exception. And I just say that. I hope this is going to work. Okay. Something is still not okay. Well, press Alt plus Enter. Ah, I surrounded it with try clutch. What's the problem? Well, what happened? Ah, I have to catch all the exceptions, I guess. Okay. I just catch.
I just sketch general exception here. What's the problem? Exception, yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, this is because here we said that it can throw arithmetical exception and exception. So this here we have to catch both to be to make sure that the exception will be catched. So that's why it was not enough to catch this. We have to catch both, both of them. Okay, so now we can use it. Just run. Yeah, and it says arithmetical exception. So we catch the arithmetical exception because uh, Yes, but I can write the text here that uh, division by zero just like this, for example. And I guess that we will get this message here. I hope so. Yes. Division by zero, arithmetical exception. That's this is the constructor of it. So this is the way to use the basics: the try, catch, finally, the throw, and the throws in our programs. We talk about cascading or chaining exceptions. When in a catch block, we don't really handle the exception, but instead we throw a new exception that will go up in the call stack, the call hierarchy that we have already talked about. In this way, our exception will be handled in another program part, but uh, the object type of the exception will change. Here we have a try block. There is the program code where the error will occur. We have the catch part where we handle the exception. We catch it here. We catch here in exception class 1, for example. But instead of handling the exception here, we throw a new exception which has a different exception class, a different exception type. And we can write a string here, some kind of description, and we, the second argument is the first exception. And somewhere in another program part, another program code, we can catch it again, but we can catch the second class, the second exception class then. And we can handle it. We can write out something or, or do something. In these cases, we usually use some special kind of methods to get the information where this came from, where this exception came from. The first exception causes the second exception. And this way we chain these exceptions. So let's see these special methods. If we want to get the original exception at the program part when at the end we'll, uh, we will handle the exception, we can call the exceptions get cause. And this way we get the exception that caused our exception. There is also a possibility in some program parts to set this. So we can set the original exception. The exception dot init cause, and we can set the exception 
as an argument, the exception type. Or there is also a possibility to get the stack trace info at the handling place. So at the end when we handle the exception, exception dot get stack trace. This is a very useful information. The get stack trace will provide us some information on the execution history of the current thread. It will contain the classes and the objects, methods that were called at the point where the exception occurred. So this, this way we can uh, find a solution, find a reason why the exception occurred. This is good for debugging, for example. There is a kind of categorization within the exceptions. We can talk about them as checked and unchecked exceptions. Well, these kinds of exceptions are functionally equivalent. There is nothing you can do with the checked exceptions that uh, cannot also be done with the unchecked exceptions and vice versa. What is the difference then between them? Let's see in details. The checked exceptions extend the java.long.exception class. The unchecked ones extend java.long.runtime exception, as I have already mentioned in a previous slide. What kind of further differences are between them? The checked exceptions must be explicitly caught by a try catch or to be or be thrown just like this we have a public void method name with the parameters and we have to write the throws check the exception and we have the program code where the checked exception can occur and of course we have to throw these exceptions or we have to catch them with a try catch block the unchecked exceptions don't have to be caught or declared thrown. So they look like this. We have a method name and we don't have to write a throw. And if the exception occurs, we can throw it or we can catch it, but we don't have to, they are not declared thrown. This is the basic difference between them. So it is a little bit more free to use the unchecked exceptions. Well, we have seen now how the checked and unchecked exceptions look like, but how to decide, because the programmer have to decide which one to use, which type to use. It's up to us. I can help uh, this decision by telling a few aspects that can make it easier. There are some pros and contrasts uh, beside the checked and the unchecked. First of all, I, I talk about the checked. Why should we use the checked exceptions? The compiler enforces on catching the catching or throwing these, so it, this way it, it makes harder to forget to handle that exception. Another uh, thing about checked exceptions that is good that when methods don't declare what unchecked exceptions they may throw, it becomes more difficult to handle them. So it's easier to handle the checked ones. But what uh, are the contrasts? What can we say uh, beside the unchecked ones? Well, the checked exceptions that uh, are thrown up to the call stack can uh, clutter the top level methods because these methods need to declare throwing all exceptions that uh, thrown from the methods they call. So ha they have to declare all and this is a hard part. So they have to catch everything. And some uh, other point of view also, beside the unchecked, that sometimes 
we can have problems with the checked if exceptions thrown because the checked exceptions that are thrown become a kind of a part of the methods interface and uh, it makes harder to add or remove exceptions from the method in later versions of the class or interface so it's up to the programmer which to use i think uh, i think it is a little bit easier to work with the checked ones and as far as i see using the unchecked exceptions can be a little bit more advanced thing and we have to uh, pay attention to them more as i have already mentioned there are many built-in expressions in java language that can be used for most of the common exceptions that can happen during executing our programs but there is also a possibility to define exceptions by the users what are the details of it the parent class should be the exception class or one of the subclasses of it for example the previously mentioned uh, runtime exception class is also a subclass of exception indeed and we have to implement this to string method as well to override it so this gives uh, the feedback for the users about the exception so we create a public class we name our exception and we write the name of the exception class that it extends and then can come the field declarations and construction declarations as in any other classes and we have to override the to string method and that's all that we have to do if we want to create our own exception let's get back to our practical code now and create some more advanced exception things here I want to show how to create a user defined one. Uh, I just create a new Java class and I call it my exception. My exception. Let's see. This is in our test project package and it's only a class and if i want to create an exception out of it i have to write extends exception and this way we already have an exception what i have to do here is to overwrite the you override the public string to string method and uh, so whenever we call this uh, there's gonna be a string like my first exception or something now this is the easiest way to create an exception class and what we want to do with it is come to the person java that we already used many times and uh, i want to use it here what i will do is uh, write here my exception throws my exception i'm gonna delete the other things because i want to show the chaining of exceptions so actually we we won't use any of the previous things 
what what I want to catch is the null pointer exception because we pass a null here. So null pointer exception and uh, all the others I I cut out. I don't need this this time. No. Okay. And this time, when we catch the new pointer exception, what I will do is not handling it. So this time I won't handle the exception. But instead of it, throw throw a new my exception. So this is chaining the exceptions. I get a no pointer exception here, and I'm going to throw it further to the calling part. Uh, we, when we call it, where we call it from, up to the core stack. So we get, we will get a null here, and that's why we will get the no pointer exception here, and we will throw this my exception. Okay. Here I'm going to use it. And I say that I want to catch my exception. And uh, write out my exception. And the get message. Yes. And we got my exception already. So this way, we could throw a new, new my exception uh, object, my exception exception object, and I could catch it here with this. So the type of it has changed. So this is about uh, the, the chaining exceptions.